Praise the Lord. Church, let us clap for our children. Let's clap for them. Let's clap for them. The Bible says, train your ch uh, train a child in the way he should grow. So that when he grows up, he will not do what? He will not depart from it. This one, they will not depart from the way of God in Jesus' name. The Lord will keep them. The Lord will sustain them. They will do exploit for the living God in Jesus' name. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. So we are all welcome to church again. May the Lord bless you as you have come in Jesus' name. I bring greetings from our pastor. He sent me a text message yesterday. He said, uh, greet the church. So I'm delivering his message to the church of God. So while he's enjoying himself and his family uh, outside the country, the Lord will bring them back safely in Jesus' name. Amen. Praise the Lord. Shall we pray? Our Heavenly Father, we thank you. We appreciate you. Thank you for your mercy. Thank you for your faithfulness. We are grateful to you for making us to be partaker of this faithfulness through which you have brought us together again this morning. Lord, we appreciate you. Accept our thanks in the name of Jesus. More importantly, we are grateful to you because you have shown us mercy. You chose to die even for us. The Bible recorded that you died, you were buried, and you resurrected. Thank you, mighty Father, even for that resurrection power that has paved the way for our salvation. We are grateful unto you. Father, accept our thanks in the name of Jesus. Thank you, mighty God, for bringing us together, even to come and hear your words this morning. Father, we commit our lives unto you. We pray that you will reach out to, unto every one of us in Jesus' name. The Bible says the word I speak, they are spirit and they are life. We pray your word will come unto us, O God, even, O God, as spirit and life this day in the name of Jesus, that by it our life shall be transformed in the name of Jesus, that, Lord, we will be carrier of your glory in the name of Jesus. Thank you, mighty Father. Lord Jesus, you said that... You said in your word, you have come to set the captive free, to heal the broken earth, to open the prison door to the prisoner. Let, oh God, anyone that is under captivity this day be set free in Jesus' name. Lord, let, oh God, the sick be healed in the name of Jesus. Let the discouraged be encouraged in the name of Jesus. Let the backslider be restored in the name of Jesus. Let the unsaved, oh Lord, be saved in the name of Jesus. Lord, let the prisoner be set free in the name of Jesus. Thank you, mighty Father. Lord, we appreciate you. Thank you because the Bible says you have given me the tongue of the learning to speak a word in season to him that is weary. I pray, oh Lord, that the word in season, the right word for everyone, Lord, you will release unto us this day in the name of Jesus. Lord, we appreciate you. We give you all the glory. For in Jesus' name, we have prayed. In Jesus' name, we have prayed. Happy Easter Sunday to every one of you. I know our time is fast spent, so you're going to bear with us. Uh, we're going to exceed our time a little bit because of all the other programs that were not factored in before. So please pardon us. Today is Easter Sunday. But I will try my best to ensure that I don't keep you here longer than necessary. The Lord will help us in Jesus' name. So this month was declared as a month of manifestation. And we're going to be listening to a message that is titled, The Son of God Was Manifested. The Son of God Was Manifested, and that is taken from the book of 1 John chapter 3, verse 8. 1 John chapter 3, verse 8. So, but we'll, go there, we'll get there shortly. Why is today very important, and why is it so special? Ephesians chapter 1, verse 7 says, In him we have redemption through blood the forgiveness of sin, and according to the riches of his grace. So this day is very important because Jesus Christ paid the price even for our redemption. And the Bible says, how did he pay for that? Through what? Through his blood. Through his blood. He shed his blood for you and for me in order to pay the price for our salvation. 
It is my prayer that that you know, sacrifice, that price that he has paid will not be in vain in your life. It will not be in vain in my life in Jesus' name. Amen. Romans chapter 5 verse 8. Say, but God demonstrates his own love towards us. In that while we are still sinner, Christ died for us. While we are still sinner, he died for us. So Jesus Christ demonstrated his love towards you and towards me. And again, to look at it closely, how did he demonstrate this love? Let's look at Isaiah chapter 53, verse 3 to 7. Isaiah chapter 53, from verse 3 to 7. The Bible says, is despised and rejected by men, he acquainted with grief, and we hid as it were our faces from him. He was despised, and we did not esteem him. Surely he has borne our griefs and carried our sorrows, yet we esteem him stricken, smitten by God and afflicted. But he was wounded for our transgression, he was bruised for our iniquities. The chastisement for our peace was upon him, and by his stripes we were ill. All we, like sheep, have gone astray. We have turned everyone to his own way. And the Lord has laid on him the iniquity of us all. Praise the Lord. Verse 7, he was oppressed and he was afflicted, yet he opened not his mouth. He was led as a lamb to the slaughter, and as a sheep before his shearer is silent. So he opened not his mouth. Praise the Lord. Jesus Christ had the power to fight, but he didn't do any of that. He did all of this for us. If you look at verse 6, at the end of verse 6, the Bible says, And the Lord has laid on him the iniquity of us all, all of us, all of us. All of us. He had the power to fight back, but he chose not to do that. If he had fought back, we would not be talking about salvation today. So he paid the price for you and for me. Praise the Lord. What are we expected to do? Jesus Christ has demonstrated his own love to us. We are expected to reciprocate that love back to him. And what is the expectation? His expectation is that we we'll do away with one thing. And that is the primary reason why he came. If you look at the book of Matthew, chapter 1, verse 21, there was a prophecy there that Mary was going to have a son. And his name would be Jesus. And the main purpose was that he was coming to deliver his, his people from what? From sin. And he completed that when he went to the cross. He paid the price to deliver us from his sin. Why he was carrying the sin of the whole world, the book of Matthew chapter 23 recorded it. We don't have enough, of, enough time to read all of this. But I'm trusting God that God will refresh our memory and give us understanding in Jesus' name. Amen. While he was on the cross, he said, my father, my father, why have you forsaken me? Why? Because he was carrying the sin of the whole world. And practically speaking, do we think as long as we continue to carry sin, we continue to, you know, live sinful life, do we think God will be, you know, pleased with us? Let's be honest with ourselves. I know this is not a popular message that we always hear. What we hear all the time is that God loves you, God loves you. Yes, God loves us. There's no doubt about that. He demonstrated his love. And he proved it by dying on the cross. He shed his, you know, his blood even for us, for our redemption. He paid the price. He paid it all. And then one thing that God expects from us is to equally do away with his sinful life. The Lord will help you. The Lord will help me in Jesus' name. Amen. First John chapter 3, I will read from verse 7 to 9. And verse 6 specifically is where we, the title was taken from. So let's pay attention. First John chapter 3 from 7 to 9. It says, little children, let no one deceive you. He who practices righteousness is righteous. Just as he is righteous, he who sin is of the devil. For the devil has sinned from the beginning. For this purpose, the Son of God was manifested, that he might destroy the works of the devil. Whoever has been born of God does not sin, for his seed remains in him, and he cannot sin because he has been born of God. 
when we, when we look at this scripture very closely, first thing we can take there is that he said, do not be deceived. There are deceptions in the world today. And there are deceptions that have entered the church of God. And there are heresies, there are lies that is not found in the word of God. And what are these heresies? That you can live your life the way you want it. You can be enjoying sin. And God is a God of love and you can still make it to heaven. That is a lie, 100% lie. It is not written in the word of God. There is no such thing. That is satanically arranged. That is the lie of the devil. Just to continue to hold people under captivity. To put them in bondage. There is no such thing. We have just seen from the word of God. Again, we can see from that scripture, from that passage, we are expected to practice what? Righteousness. You have to practice it. Practice, they say, it makes what? Perfect. If you don't practice righteousness, you cannot be righteous. You have to practice it. That's what the word of God says. These are not my words. He said, he who practice righteousness is what? It's righteous. It is expected that we practice righteousness. Not by your own strength, by the grace of God, by the help of the Holy Spirit. You must be willing. You must surrender yourself. You must not justify the fact that, well, nobody can be righteous. It is not stated in the word of God. If that is your understanding, that person will remain unrighteous until Christ comes. And if Christ comes in that situation, too bad. I pray we will not remain in that situation in Jesus' name. And again, the Bible makes us to understand that anyone that is living in sin is a child of the devil. Am I right? Let's talk, praise the Lord. Am I right? I didn't say that the word of God said that. I'm just quoting what the word of God says. I'm equally hearing from the word of God. This word of God is applicable to me. It's not just for you alone. So by the special grace of God, God helped me to prepare this. I've heard it. So, and again, I'm still hearing it. So, and I'm presenting the word of God to you. So, that is what the word of God says. Again, the Bible makes us to understand whoever that is a child of God does not sin intentionally. I'm just paraphrasing it now. If we're going to say it raw, it does not sin. That's what the Bible says. But I'm adding a little bit to it intentionally. So that some of you can be comfortable. I'm not saying things to please you, but I'm, I know what I'm saying. So intentionally, let's make it that way. So whoever that is a child of God, you don't commit sin intentionally. The Bible says that Jesus manifested to do what? To destroy the works of the devil. And that is the main reason why he manifested, to destroy the works of the devil. And what are the works of the devil? What are the works of the devil? Yeah. Somebody said to steal, to kill, and to do what? To destroy. John 10.10. 10. But there's one avenue through which he operates with. Sin. There is only one access that he needs. Once he can get access to that person, then he begins to steal, begin to kill, and begin to destroy. And that's why the Bible says, Jesus Christ manifested that he might destroy the works of the devil. And so if there's anything very important that you need to take care of, sin. Once you are able to deal with that, then it doesn't have access to your life. And it is my prayer that the devil will not have access to your life in Jesus' name. Several years back, I have learned to understand that, you know, don't say the devil is stupid. Mm -hmm. You may say he's stupid. But it's destroying the life of many people. It's destroying families. It's destroying marriages. It's destroying people's destiny. And we are saying it's stupid. You just, need to be wise. you just need to be wise. Look into your life. What will give him access into your life? If you're able to deal with that, then you have shut the door. Look at Job. In the book of Job chapter 1. The Bible talked about Job. He said Job was upright. He shone evil. He's a blameless man. And what did God say about him? God said, have you not seen my servant Job? There was none like him. 
Devil has tried in many ways, but the edge of God is around him. He couldn't get in. If he was able to get in, he would destroy so many things. But there was an edge of God around him. And the Bible recorded that. He said, have you not built his head, your head around him? You have blessed the work of his son. You have prospered him. That was lamentation of Job. I mean, of uh, Satan concerning Job. It is my prayer that the enemy will lament around you in Jesus' name. He will not rejoice. He will be lamenting. And I pray that God will not grant him access to your life in Jesus' name. That was for Job, and God did it for a purpose. So God is not interested in doing that concerning you. So, but God wants to be proud of you. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Jesus Christ also, on the account of Jesus, the Bible said the prince of this world comes and he found nothing in him. He found nothing. So he had no access to his life. So let's not take this issue very, you know, let's not take it casually. Take it very seriously. If you are a Christian, you must ensure that you live a sinless life. Don't tolerate sin. Don't indulge yourself in any form of sin. Praise the Lord. The Lord will help you. The Lord will help me in Jesus' name. Sin may be interesting for a moment, but it destroyed the lives of the victim. It destroyed the lives of the victim. Let's see some instances in the word of God. We are just talking about sin generally now. We don't have time to begin to break it down one by one, but all of you understand what we are talking about. In the book of Numbers chapter 25, you can write it down. We won't have time to read them. Number 25, verse 1 to 3. There was an account of the children of Israel. Balaam, uh, Balak called Balaam to come and curse the children of Israel. He did everything possible. God did not permit it. Because God said, what, whoever he has blessed, nobody can curse him. In the book of Numbers chapter, uh, chapter 23. But when we go to number 25, verse 1 to 3, we realize that at the end of the day, Balaam gave an advice to Balak. He said, if you want God to deal with these people yourself, I mean himself, make them to commit sin. What kind of sin was introduced to their life? Sin of sexual immorality. And God himself moved and began to deal with them. I know in our time, it's still the same thing. The same principle, devil is still using it. Are you toying with sin of immorality? Begin to repent. Talk to God. Ask God for mercy. It is dangerous. It destroys the lives of the victim. Even God himself will rise. God will not defend that individual. The Lord will help you. The Lord will help me in Jesus' name. Amen. Are we going to talk of Samson and Delilah? He was full of pride, overconfidence. And he began to mess around with somebody that was going to destroy his life. At the end of the day, what happened? He became a grinder in the prison. His eye were removed. Time will not permit us to read it again. Judges chapter 16, verse 15, 15 to 21. You can write it down. Judges chapter 16, verse 15 to 21. He became a grinder in the priest. This is a man full of power, full of anointing. God wanted him to be on uh, uh, to deliver his people, to be a deliverer, but he messed up completely. Because he was full of pride, he was so arrogant, everybody was talking to him. He said, no, if God was not with me, I would not be pulling down all this thing I'm pulling down. And he wasted his anointing on the lap of a woman. The Lord will help you, the Lord will help me in Jesus' name. Amen. Are we going to talk of hypocrisy, dishonesty, and eye services? Let's remember Ananias and Sapphira. They are in the church. And they pay the price. Are we going to talk of envy and jealousy? Remember King Saul. King Saul and David. There was a song that they said, well, David had killed 10,000 and Saul had killed 1,000. And envy started from that time. And all he wanted to do is to kill David. But if God be for you, nobody can do it. Nobody can be against you. God was with David. And we know how King Saul ended. He became victim himself. I pray you will not become victim in the hands of the devil in Jesus' name. Amen. 
Romans chapter 6, verse 12 to 14. Romans chapter 6, verse 12 to 14. He said, therefore, do not let sin reign in your mortal body, that you should obey it in its, in its lot. And do not present your member as instrument of unrighteousness to sin, but present yourself to God as being alive from the dead, and your members as instrument of righteousness to God. For sin shall not have dominion over you, for you are not under law, but under grace. Praise the Lord. God is talking to us here. He said, do not pre present your members as instruments of unrighteousness. What are the members that you have in your body? Everything God has created in your body is to honor God. Everything. Is it your eyes? Is it your hair? Is it your hand? Whatever it is to honor God. The Bible says, don't present this as an instrument of unrighteousness. We are in a world today that... Everybody is presenting their body as instrument of unrighteousness. It ought not to be so for any child of God. You listen to the news, that's what you are going to see there. You walk around the street, that's what you are going to see there. They are presenting their members as instrument of unrighteousness. But for you as a child of God, it ought not to be. Glorify God in your body. Glorify God with members of your body. Everything God has given unto you, use it to honor the living God. The Lord will help you. The Lord will help me in Jesus' name. Amen. We are talking about the Son of God was manifested. And he manifested to destroy the works of the devil. And God is empowering you to destroy the works of the devil. Don't take it for granted. That is the best uh, love we can give to God because of what he has done for us. All of us, we are celebrating Easter Sunday. Yes, what is its expectation from you? Easter Sunday is not just for religiosity. It's a time of reflection. It's a time for you to really appreciate what he has done for you. The ultimate price that he paid on the cross. And to see if you are living up to that expectation. Are you here this morning? You don't even have a relationship with him? Or maybe you had that relationship. You have backslided. God is still reaching out unto you. Remember I said the other time that if you are a child of God, you do not commit sin intentionally. Maybe unintentionally something has happened and you want to make it right with God this morning. If you have not genuinely accepted him as your Lord and Savior, you cannot be partaker of the very Benefits of the victory. We are going to talk about that briefly here and we'll pray. Benefits of the victory. There are so many benefits there. By the special grace of God, God helped me also to take that decision. So if you are here this morning and you have not truly given your life to Christ, and so that you will not be denied of that benefit of the victory. So raise up your hand if you want to be prayed for. Praise the Lord. Amen. Let's look at the benefits of, of the cross. Benefit of the cross. And what we are going to do is that because of our time, as I talk about it one by one, we're going to be praying. Benefit of the cross. Romans chapter 6, verse 14. We're talking about deliverance from sin. That is number one benefit. Deliverance from sin. Romans chapter 6, verse 14. Romans chapter 6, verse 14. He said, For sin shall not have dominion over you, for you are not under law, but under grace. I want us to rise up. If you want to sit down, you can sit down. But let's rise up if you can rise up. So we're going to be praying. You are going to make a declaration. And if you want, you can join her with somebody around you. 
Join her with somebody and pray for yourself and pray for that person. That sin will no longer have dominion over you. By the reason of the resurrection power of Jesus Christ, sin will not have dominion over you. Sin will not have dominion over your sister. Sin will not have dominion over your brother. In the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, every yoke of sin in your life, in my life, is broken. In the name of Jesus, by the power in the blood of Jesus, you are delivered. I am delivered from any form of sin. Sin will no longer have dominion over me, over my brethren in the name of Jesus. Over anyone in this assembly. Sin will not have dominion over us in the name of Jesus. Thank you, our Father. In Jesus' name, we have prayed. Deliverance from sickness. Deliverance from sickness. First Peter chapter 2 verse 24. He said, who himself bore our sins in his own body on the tree, that we, having died to sin, might live for the righteousness. But who strive, by who strive, you are healed. So you are still going to pray for the person beside you, and then you pray for yourself as well. You are going to ask that sickness will not have dominion over you. In the name of Jesus, and paradversion, there is any sickness in your body. In the name of Jesus, Almighty Father, even as we join our faith together at this time, Lord, we pray, oh Lord, that sickness will not have dominion over us. In the name of Jesus, is there anyone in our midst, oh Lord, that is sick? Lord, we oh God, speak healing. In the name of Jesus, because the Bible says, by his stripe, they were here. By the stripe of Jesus Christ, Lord, we are here. We are delivered, oh Lord, from any form of sickness. In the name of Jesus, thank you, our Father. In Jesus' name we are praying. One of the, another benefit is deliverance from curses. Curses can be generational. It can be self-afflicted. Galatians chapter 3 verse 13. Say Jesus Christ has redeemed us from every curse of the Lord. Be made a curse for us for it is written. Curse is every man that hangs himself on a tree. So you are going to make a declaration again that whatever cause that may be operating in your life, is it generational? Is it self-afflicted? That the almighty God will deliver you. Will set you free. Pray for yourself and pray for the person beside you in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. Almighty Father, Lord, we thank you. We appreciate you. Thank you for the blood of Jesus that was shed on the cross of Calvary. The Bible says that Jesus Christ has redeemed us from every curse of the law. Be made a curse for all, for it is written. Because it's every man that hangs himself on the tree. Lord, we commit our lives unto you God this morning. Is there any curse, oh Lord, that is operating in our life, that is operating in anyone's lives, oh God? Lord, we stand upon the blood of Jesus, even this hour, oh God, by the reason of the power of God resurrection. Lord, we decree, oh God, Lord, that every cause is broken, even in our lives, in our men, be it generational, be it self-afflicted, oh God, Lord, every such is broken, in the name of Jesus, Lord, the Bible says, if the Son of God set us free, we are free indeed, in the name of Jesus, by the power in the blood of Jesus, we are free indeed, oh Lord, from any form of curse, in the name of Jesus, thank you, our Father. In Jesus' name, we are praying. Deliverance from evil covenants. Evil covenants. Galatians, no, Colossians, verse 2, verse, uh, chapter 2, verse 14. He said, In as much then, sorry, that's not Colossians, Colossians chapter 2, verse 14. He said, Having wiped out the handwritten of requirement that was against us, which was contrary to us. He has taken it out of the way, having nailed it to the cross. Jesus Christ has nailed it to the cross. You are going to 
pray that you are delivered from any evil covenant in the name of Jesus. Any covenant that you might have entered into unknowingly, ignorantly, in any way, all that has been entered on your behalf, begin to pray in the name of Jesus. By the blood of Jesus, every such evil covenant over your life, over every member of your household, over every member of Jesus' father is broken in the name of Jesus. Almighty Father, Lord, we decree this morning every evil covenant, oh God, Lord, that we have entered unknowingly, ignorantly, or as we enter on our behalf by anyone, oh God, Lord, to this hour, oh God, we break it in the name of Jesus, through the power that is in the name of Jesus, through the power and the blood of Jesus, every such evil covenant is broken in our lives, in our men, over your door, in the name of Jesus. Thank our Father. In Jesus' name we are praying. Deliverance from satanic oppression. Colossians chapter 2 verse 15. Say, having the same principality and power, he make a public spectacle of them, triumphing over them in it. You are going to pray that you are delivered from every satanic oppression in the name of Jesus. Begin to pray in Jesus' name. Almighty Father, Lord, we thank you, we appreciate you. Because the Bible says, they have sport, principality and power. He has made a public spectacle of them. He has triumphed over Oh God, over the minute. Lord, this day, oh God, we stand upon that victory which you have won for us, oh God. And Lord, we decree, oh God, Lord, deliverance from any form of satanic oppression in the name of Jesus. In any way, our lives, oh God, mean our prayer. Lord, we are set free. We are delivered, oh Lord, in the name of Jesus. We ride upon that wing of victory in the name of Jesus. Thank you, our Father. In Jesus' name, we are praying. Deliverance from poverty. We are going to pray. Second Corinthians chapter 8, verse 9. He said, Do you not know the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ? That though he was free, yet because of us, he became poor. So that through his own poverty, we can be free. Begin to decree and begin to pray that this morning you are delivered from any form of poverty. Poverty is no longer your portion. In the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, you begin to live in abundance. You begin to live, oh God, in abundance. In the name of Jesus. Almighty Father, Lord, we stand upon the integrity of your word. The Bible says that you, you do not know the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ. Though he was free, he became poor. That through his own poverty, that we can be free. We stand upon oh God, the integrity of your word and we decree, O oh Lord, poverty, O oh Lord, is no longer our portion in the name of Jesus. Poverty in the spirit is no longer be our portion. Poverty, O oh God, in the physical is no longer be our portion in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. We live in abundance, spiritually and otherwise, in the name of Jesus. Thank our Father. In Jesus' name we are praying. And lastly, deliverance from an untimely death. Hebrews chapter 2, verse 14 to 15. He said, In as much as then as the children have partaken of flesh and blood, he himself likewise share in the same, that through death he might destroy him who had the power of death. That is the devil. And release those who through fear of death were all their lifetime subject to born day. You are going to pray because Jesus Christ had died even for you that you are delivered from any form of untimely death. No member of your family will die untimely. In the name of Jesus, begin to stand upon the integrity of the word of God and begin to pray. Make declaration. Untimely death will not be your portion. In the name of Jesus, will not be portion of any member of your household. In the name of Jesus, the word of God say we shall live. We shall not die. We shall lead to the care, even the work of the law. In the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, you shall fulfill the plan and the purpose of God. Almighty God, I stand in agreement God, with my brethren this morning. And I decree, oh God, that on time later will not be my portion. Will not be the portion of my wife. Will not be the portion of my children. In the name of Jesus, will not be the portion of any member of Jesus' father. We shall lead, even to declare the works of the law. In the name of Jesus. 
any covenant with death is annulled in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. We shall live, oh God, to fulfill for your purpose in the name of Jesus. The Bible says that you have shown us, oh God, even salvation. You will satisfy us with long life. That is our portion. We stand upon the integrity of your all because you are the resurrection and the life. You are the life giver. We receive that life, oh God, today in the name of Jesus to fulfill your plan and your purpose in the name of Jesus. Our life shall not be wasted even at new day. Our life shall not be wasted in the name of Jesus. Thank you, our Father. For in Jesus' name we have prayed. In Jesus' name we have prayed. In Jesus' name. Our Heavenly Father, we thank you. We appreciate you. Thank you so much for that which you have done for us. We are indeed grateful. The Bible said the Son of God was made manifest that he might destroy the works of the devil. Thank you, Lord Jesus, because you manifested so that you can destroy every works of the devil in our lives. We are grateful even for deliverances you have wrought in our midst today. Thank you, O oh God, for every satanic work that you have destroyed in our lives. Lord, we pray that these are forever destroyed in the name of Jesus. Lord, even as you have spoken unto us directly about living a life that will glorify you, to live a life of righteousness, Lord, we commit our lives unto you. We pray. Help every one of us individually that we will live a life that we honor you in the name of Jesus. We live a life that is, oh God, that will be pleasing unto you in the name of Jesus. You have instructed us that we should practice righteousness so that we can be righteous. Help us, oh Lord, so that we will not underestimate, oh God, this cancer in the name of Jesus. As we leave this place, oh God, going to our houses, engaging different, different activities, Lord, help us to begin to practice righteousness in Jesus' name. Holy Spirit divine, we ask for your help, even to do this in the name of Jesus. Lord, the Bible says, your word will not return unto you void. He said, it shall accomplish those things you are pleased with. It shall prosper in the thing where you have sent it. Father, your word you have sent to, to us, O God, this day. Let it prosper our lives in Jesus' name. Lord, let it bring forth fruit that will germinate in the name of Jesus. Fruit that will endure to everlasting in the name of Jesus. Thank you, our Father. Lord, we are grateful to you. Thank you, mighty God. Even for everything you have done and what you are doing and what you are set to do. We give you all the glory, our Father, in Jesus' name. Lord, at this point in time, we commit, O oh Lord, even our pastor and his family who are not, who have traveled unto you, we pray, be with them and bring them back, back peacefully and safely in the name of Jesus. Lord, to all our other brethren who have traveled, Lord, we ask that your presence will abide with them also in Jesus' name, that when it's time for them to come back, they will come back peacefully and safely in Jesus' name. Lord, we thank you. As we go in this week, oh Lord, Father, we ask that you will go with us in Jesus' name. You will lead us. You will guide us. You will instruct us in the name of Jesus. And Lord, you will help us, oh God, to obey you in all things in Jesus' name. The Bible says, as men that are led by the Spirit of God, they are the sons of God. Help us, oh God, so that we, can, we will continually be led by your Spirit in the name of Jesus. Blessed be your holy our Father. We appreciate you. We return all the glory unto you. For in Jesus' name, we have prayed. In Jesus' name, we have prayed. Let us share the grace in fellowship. In the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the such fellowship of the Holy Spirit, be with us now and forevermore. Amen. Surely, goodness and mercy shall follow us all the days of our lives and we shall dwell in the house of the Lord forever and ever. 
Amen. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Uh, for our first timer, please, uh, can you wait for a few minutes so that uh, one, of, one of us will come and attend to you for a few minutes. God bless you as you do so in Jesus' name.